Hi, I'm Tom Van Tassel from Cory, Pennsylvania, and Cory, PA is the home of every Climax locomotive that was ever built and shipped around the world. Uh, behind me, at, at this point, we are in Palmer, Alaska, which is uh, where the last Climax A is sitting. And behind me in the shipping container is what appears to be a a rather strange load of stuff. That stuff will turn into a Climax A when we return it to Cory. What we are doing here at this very moment is we are preparing to uh, repack everything that's in that container behind me. We will pack it up securely, uh, put it back in the container, tie it down in preparation for shipment back to Cory. Quite a few steps to do that because of the type of material we're dealing with. It's a wood frame locomotive. Uh, a lot of the wood has been dry rotted, but we are, have to save that because we need it for patterns. So everything will be bringing, brought back to Cory. And at that point, we will purchase new materials and rebuild it uh, just like it was the day it came out of the Climax factory. Good morning from Palmer, Alaska. We're here at what we call the pit which is a, a gravel pit south of Palmer, uh, where we have located our container with the parts from the Climax 313. And over the last few days, we have assembled other trailers, containers, lifts, and so on. And uh, two days ago, we finished up getting everything repositioned as best we could. And last night, uh, we had three more of our team fly in, pick them up at the airport. This morning, we, we've got a little bit of a change of plans because a couple of us are going to be going back to some uh, storage units where there are other parts stored and combing through to find whatever we can and to bring them back here. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we've got four of the guys are gonna be continuing on with the inventorying and taking stuff out of the container, bringing them onto the flatbed, doing uh, some photography on each piece and assigning inventory numbers and putting them into temporary storage in the trailer. Uh, and then later we will be bringing them back out and this will be occurring over the next four days, back out and repositioning them in the container and tying them down for shipping. And that's pretty much what we've got going on right now. Uh, try to have a little bit of fun while we're doing it. That's it from Palmer. The crew, they've got it. Their work's cut out for them and they'll, they'll do a fantastic job. I'm looking forward to their success in getting this forward and running and being able to transport it, you know, see the country with it. That'll be fantastic. I'm looking forward to the team successfully pulling this off. Today is day number five and we are the second day into the container got the preparation all worked out and uh, everybody is now here on site. Yesterday we were hoping to all be here working in the container but we still had other warehouses to go through and pull parts out of. Uh, that got accomplished yesterday afternoon and back here last night and everything is spread out and we're starting to make some sense and see what we're finding and what might be missing and searching for other parts. Hopefully by tonight we have the majority of the parts sorted into groups, getting a pretty good idea of, okay, is there anything major that we're looking for that we aren't finding that may still be in one of the warehouses? There's a lot of stuff in these warehouses where we were, where stuff was stored. One of the elements on this engine, I mean this engine sat out in the tundra for nearly 70 years before it got hauled back into Nome. And there were, I mean, we're talking 70 miles out of Nome, there's not a lot of people out there, but eh, ample opportunity for people to go out and pick up things. So the headlight, which they were tin, basically tin headlamps, uh, used kerosene, uh, that was never with it. Uh, in the process, Keith, had started accumulating some of the parts that he knew were missing, uh, including a headlamp. In the meantime, yesterday, in going through the warehouses, Eric pointed up on a shelf and there was a side of a lamp. We pulled it down and uh, this lamp is in beautiful 
near mint condition. Period correct, just a beautiful lamp. I asked Eric if he would consider us having that, and he said yes, and so we, we have that. And it, I mean, it's a, it's a beauty. And we've, we've found a few little gems that we didn't know that were in amongst uh, the artifacts, the parts and pieces. So it, it's been, been an interesting journey, some of the things we're finding. One of the things that we have to do before we start reloading things is to get this container lifted off of the chassis it's on and onto a roadworthy chassis. It was, it was put onto this chassis just for storage, but we don't have the ability here to lift a fully loaded chassis. So that's one of the key elements is just getting things kind of organized, ready to go back in, but getting the weight down in the container so that uh, Eric and other associated friends can get this uh, container lifted off of the chassis and onto the one that it's going to be transported to Anchorage on. It's going to be kind of an interesting day, kind of fast paced, but we're going to have some interruptions in the process. Reporting on our next to the last day of our little adventure here in Palmer, Alaska, loading up Climax 313, the only complete A Climax left in existence. And we're loading up a container after pulling it all out, inventorying, and we've still got to search for a few more small parts. But uh, we're on the downhill slide. Should have been at the point we're at right now about noon today, but we had some holdups with getting a tractor in here to move trailers around and switching the carrier for the intermodal going to the port. But Late this afternoon we got that underway, so we're probably going to run a little late tonight getting the majority of the stuff repacked, uh, packed into the container and uh, ready to ship. We'll probably have some more to do tomorrow morning. Um, hopefully we're far enough along that we can do our, our closing and uh, finish up the, the details and take it to the port tomorrow. Uh, Linden Transport is going to be transporting the container from Anchorage through Whittier and on down to Seattle for us. My name is Kevin Christensen. I'm the younger son of Keith Christensen. And, uh, you know, this thing arrived, I guess, before I was born at the house, but through my entire life it was there. So I just remember climbing all over it, and it was kind of like my jungle gym growing up. You know, it, it was. Yeah, just something that I grew up with. It was kind of weird when you go to people's houses, like, you don't have a train in your yard, you know? <laughs> you know, it's, it's real nice that uh, we were able to get in touch with these guys here, and uh, hopefully they'll be able to restore it to its, I guess, its former glory, or, you know, and you know, be able to see it run. And uh, I know my dad would really love that, and it would just be nice to be able to see one of his projects that he loved a lot and just couldn't quite finish, you know, up and running again. And it seems like these guys are the ones that do it, so. When Carl Wasink first introduced himself to me and told me that he was working with uh, Eric Christensen to acquire the Climax, I grilled him for quite a while. And then he introduced Tom. We met personally and I said, I can't think of a better tribute than taking it back to its home where it was built and displaying it appropriately. They have a, a perfect candidate for restoration, and I wish them all well. Uh, we support them every way we can while they're here in Alaska. I hope that the local community can support them as well as our community supports 557. Uh, I feel honored that Carl remembered me and uh, asked me to come along on this expedition. And, you know, it's a one-of-a-kind piece of machinery that's very unique. There's only one of them, and uh, so I feel honored to be involved. It's 118 years old, so uh, there's going to be a lot of work involved to make it uh, functional, but uh, think of it as a challenge. I've never seen another one, never seen parts of another one. I've just seen pictures of them, so I'm interested to see that get back running. We did a final inspection through it to make sure everything was secure, and now it's pulled out and headed for Port PA. We've got the Climax packed in the, in the container behind us. Uh, it's on its way to Anchorage to be shipped from there. Yeah, I want to thank the uh, couple gentlemen who come up from 
uh, West Virginia. His name is Steve Niederreiter. Uh, just been a, a real blessing and a big help to us. Uh, Grady Smith from Marietta, Ohio. Uh, his come up and has just been such a knowledgeable person. We're here at Whittier, Alaska. This is where the Climax A313 will ship to Seattle, Washington. We will be spotting trailers, getting ready to unload that from the trailer it's in, uh, identify all the parts, repack it, and get it ready for transport to Anchorage where it will ship via rail from Anchorage down here to Whittier. And then at that point, it will be placed on one of the pub barge here and preparation to be shipped to Seattle, Washington. And then at that point, it will ship from Seattle, Washington to Cory via truck. Pennsylvania. Our Climax A313 has arrived. We've opened the doors. Uh, we're very excited about what we see here because everything has stayed right where we uh, left it when we packed it up in Palmer, Alaska. There's a lot of a lot of items in there. We have a significant amount of work to do. Now that the Climax uh, locomotive is here, uh, we will be pulling the parts and pieces out, being able to spread them out here in the shop. Uh, some of the items will need to be taken other places to be uh, worked on and restored there. Uh, we've got uh, a number, a lot of woodwork that'll need taken care of, uh, a lot of metal parts and pieces that will need clean, machine, whatever it might take to get us uh, back in the point where we can actually begin reassembly right here in this building. And this building, by the way, has been donated to Cory Rails by, by the Hammond family. So this will henceforth become the Climax uh, restoration building and as well as a, as a museum for other Climax related items made here right here in Cory. You know, winding up uh, this this segment uh, with it now back here in Cory, it's uh, it's pretty exciting to be able to see something that got shipped out of here 118 years ago in 1902 and went directly to Nome, Alaska, and then 70 miles north out of Nome to Council, where it worked on the uh, on eight miles of its own track uh, with the gold mines out in Ophir and. Uh, this is the first time it's been home in 118 years. We're kind of, uh, kind of excited, and I think there's a lot of people that are going to be excited to see it. But there's a lot of people also, I think, that at this point believe that we're going to open up the doors and it's going to be a running locomotive, and <laughs> that's not quite the case. We got a lot of work ahead of us. We're, we're grateful to all of our donors who have stepped forward over the last three years uh, from. Cory Community Foundation, Arlene Smith, ECRA, I, I can't even name them all off the top of my head right now, but we're eternally grateful. Thank you. Thank you.